Hey guys, Badinfus here, and this is a review, unboxing and assembly video of the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. Let's go! After so many years of inactivity, AMD is back in the CPU market, it's back in the game. It's no longer only Intel, but AMD and Intel, and you have no idea how excited I am about this. Because... For maybe a decade so far, Intel has had clutches on this market, it had a monopoly, and it was only Intel. If you wanted the best of the best, you had to get Intel. So Intel, knowing this, it was very anti-consumer, there was pretty much no progression in the CPUs, they had the extra K versions, which could allow you to overclock, but the, the other ones, the standard ones, were not overclockable. So if you wanted to overclock your CPU, you had to pay 100 bucks, 200 bucks extra. However, AMD are back in the game with much lower prices, much better hardware. Intel, after seeing this launch, they got scared. They lowered prices. They're probably gonna get rid of the K versions, which are so stupid to begin with. So this will be an unboxing video for the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. This is the best of the best of AMD. Currently the best of the best. I say currently because after a week or after a few days actually, this is no longer gonna be the best of the best AMD has to offer because Threadripper, AMD Threadripper is coming to town and is gonna rip, rip this to shreds. Seriously. It's gonna be so much better than this thing. So I have a few days to boast about uh, boast about how big my cock is because I have the biggest cock in the market currently. But first, let me talk about the box. This is a standard box, pretty cool box, I think. The thing about I hate about the newer CPU boxes they offer is that you can see the CPU from outside the box. This might seem a good thing, you can touch it, you can see it, you can say, oh, this is marvelous, I can see my CPU from outside the box. But this is a very stupid decision. Because, and it's not only AMD, Intel also does this. Because one little bump on this side can completely damage your CPU. It can scratch it, it can, it can do many things to it. Let me give an idea. Put it in the middle of the box. Therefore, if it's in there, nobody can hit it, nobody can scratch it. It can be completely safe. Why do they do this? Well, because it's nice to look at, of course, but... I prefer safetyness to how it looks like. I don't get it. And the reason why I say inside the box, in the middle of the box, is... Let me open this baby up. And you can see what I mean. Well, this box is completely empty. You can see. Completely empty because there's no cooler. So you might say, oh, AMD, what have you done? You are super anti-consumer. Why don't you provide something? I mean, how can you put this in the motherboard without a cooler. You're so stupid, why would you do this? Well, there's a completely good reason for that. And I admire this decision. Because, first of all, this is the best of the best CPU. This is the X version. The X versions don't have a cooler. These versions are only used by professionals, by people who want the best of the best and people who, who work with computers, with their computer, which means that there's constant stress on their CPU. Do you honestly think that a stock cooler is gonna be good for such a machine, which is constantly working at the highest load? Well, no, even if there was a cooler inside of here, I would completely not use it. And that's why I bought the NZXT Kraken X52 and I was gonna buy it anyway even if there was a cooler so why do I think that there's there's a good decision to not include a cooler well, because first of all it's gonna put more stress on AMD they're gonna put something which is not gonna be used like from maybe 80% of the people who buy this thing and to be useless to me because it will increase the price of the CPU but of course the lower tier versions like the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 have the cooler, not, not the X versions because X versions are, as I said, pretty powerful and you don't need a uh, stock cooler. 
So anyway, let's unbox this. As you can see, we have a cookie case, like a candy case, I guess, of the CPU. We have it in here. Basically, do this. And there's a CPU. You can unplug it. And also, AMD did not learn their lesson. They have this on the CPU itself. Intel had had the right idea to put these little pins on the motherboard, not on the CPU. It's a lot better to put it on the motherboard because you can drop this a lot easier. You can, uh, there's more movement of this particular item than the motherboard. So it's a better decision to put the pins on the motherboard. They did learn their lesson, but with Threadripper. Currently, this CPU does not have that, which is quite unfortunate. I really admired Intel's approach to this, putting the pins on the motherboard itself. But it's okay, I guess. We have this, the CPU. We have a sticker here. If you want to put the sticker on the, the case you have, which I'm not going to do, of course. We have the instructions. Installation instructions. <coughs> yeah, there we go. And this is all you get. You get a piece of paper with installation instructions. You get the CPU. And you get some stickers. Where's the bracket, you may ask? Well, I'm kind of disappointed. The bracket should come with the CPU, not with anything else, because this is an AM4 CPU. It should come with a bracket. It does not come with the CPU, and it doesn't come with the motherboard. What is that? Why is that? You have to buy it separately. And the good thing about this cooler I got, this radiator, is that it comes with a bracket, an AM4 bracket. In my opinion, this should not be the case. It should come with the CPU. It should be manufactured by the CPU. Guys, over at AMD. But it is not. Which, I guess it's okay. But I think this is a better decision to put the bracket with the CPU. Anyway, this is all you get in the box. It's a pretty cool box, I think. No cooler, of course. Which is completely fine, as I said. And if you get a lower tier, uh, AMD CPU, you are gonna get a cooler because the lower tier ones are used for from people who are casual gamers, casual users of, of the PC, so they're not gonna know much about PCs, they're not gonna know what to buy for a cooler, so it's a good thing for them to have a cooler. But for me, it's definitely a better thing not to have a cooler. Anyway, this is all for the unboxing, let's start the assembly of the CPU. In order to install the CPU, you need a back plate and a retention plate, which has to be AM4. If you're gonna use an air cooler, do not remove these plates from the motherboard. However, if you use liquid cooling like myself, you need to remove them. Place the back plate on the back side of your motherboard and screw it in. Lift up the locking mechanism. Take your CPU and align the triangle shown on the motherboard to the triangle on the CPU. Gently place your CPU in place without adding any force to it. Once it's in, lock it down. Place the cooler down and screw it in. And after about two days of using this thing, I can give you my full thoughts about it. It's an absolutely great purchase in my opinion. Rendering times are so much lower and for gaming is great as well, even though it's not made for gaming. For gaming it helps a lot as well. Rendering times are pretty much non-existent there. It goes like this whoop and the video is ready. It's not like that obviously, but it's pretty fast. It's a lot faster than with my i7 processor. And one last thing I forgot to mention, I have the 800X version of this processor. The X versions show up as running 20 degrees hotter than they normally do. So if you purchase this processor and see it's running idle at 60 degrees Celsius, you might freak out. So how it works from my understanding is that they purposefully made it look like it's running 20 degrees hotter for the overclocked system, people who are gonna overclock their system, and most people who are gonna buy the CPU are gonna overclock it. And if it shows up at running at 80 degrees under load, the fans are gonna spin a lot faster, cooling the system. 
that's how I understand it, I don't know if that's exactly correct, I don't fully understand the reason why behind this, for instance if it shows up at running 60 degrees Celsius, it's actually running at 40 degrees Celsius. I don't see the, the exact reason for that, I kind of explained it in my head and I told you guys, but you can read forums and whatnot for that issue. But that's it for the review I guess, it comes without a bracket and without a cooler, the X versions come without a bracket and without a cooler, so bear that in mind if you want to buy this. And if you don't have a cooler then get the cooler before you buy this because if you have this without a cooler it's not gonna work at all, obviously. So that's it guys for this video, thank you so much for watching, I hope I helped you out picking a CPU and I'll see you in the next video.